everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's a uh, second video Monday. That's right, today's video. You saw I did another one uh, in answer to Ben's question. That was the one before, and that one was all instruction about uh, pins and all kinds of things like that. But today, this video is just going to be having some fun in the shop. No instructions, so just sit back, relax if you're watching it. And uh, today I'm going to uh, make a screwdriver. And I'll tell you a story. It's got a kind of a story behind it, something I always wanted to do. And I'm down here now. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> We're going to knock this out. Let's okay. check it out. Okay, about, uh, I don't know, uh, for about 20 years, I had a good friend of mine who just recently passed away. He retired, and he wasn't even retired like a year, and he passed away. What a shame. Patty Sheridan was his name. And uh, what happened was, Patty, one time I made him a birdhouse that looked exactly like his house. I took a picture of his house, and then I made a birdhouse. And I even made a little figure of Patty that uh, was would yell at the kids to get off his lawn. Patty was a good guy, <laughs> funny guy. So uh, anyway, I, what I needed to make the porch, I made, I put lights in the birdhouse. So uh, on the porch, it needed to be, when I lit it up, I used the LED, but I needed some kind of yellowish light. So I, I sacrificed one of these. This was all messed up, this uh, handle from the screwdriver. So I sacrificed this, and I, uh, I said, one day, I'm going to make this screwdriver over again on my own. So it's chrome vanadium, as you can see. It's a good screwdriver. I don't know what brand it was, but what we're going to do is I'm going to take this handle off. Now I'm going to cut it with a hacksaw down here, take this off and fabricate a new handle, something pretty cool, something nice. Okay, using a hacksaw, I made a bunch of cuts down the side here to relieve. Now, if this starts to get bound up in the the uh, acetate, you just put a little WD-40 on there. That'll let the uh, blade go through. But I made a bunch of cuts to relieve the pressure around here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to drive it out with a uh, pin punch. We were just talking about pin punches. Right through the top here. Just drive it out. The blade. There we go. So you can see driving it out. Very easy. It's coming okay. out. Okay. The handle's off. You can see here. This is your typical blade blank. We're going to, we won't be needing these fins. I got something else in plan. So let's throw this out and get started. Now this beautiful piece of clear grain ash was given to me by Dave over at uh, Ingalls Coat Shop. And uh, my buddy Dave has been making videos now for quite a while and a fantastic channel if you've never seen it before. But he had a contest one time and he says, you know, I have some scrap wood if you want to put your name in a hat. Uh, and I won. So uh, this is the first time I'm using some of his wood and I'm going to be making the handle out of this. Got these beautiful half inch carriage bolts from Track to Supply the other day. And uh, you can see now we drilled a hole all the way through. Okay, that's important because we want everything to line up right. Now, remember, this is going to go on the top. We, we're going to want to make a uh, kind of a pocket, a recess. We have this spade bit, and that's why we have these holes that will all line up. And you see where we're going with this. Okay, we tap this. It's a half inch by 13 threads. And you see how nice that's tapped in there, right? Now that's gonna be our strength and everything. This will go into that recess, but we'll do that after we put on the lathe. Now we have to work on the front and figure out how long we want this and what kind of shape we want. One of the issues you face when you deal, you know, you're doing this without a plan, more or less. I have everything I like, but it's too big. It's too big, and I kind of like those smaller, you know. And I, even though the shape is right, it's just too big for my. I like a small, you know. I like those machinist style screwdrivers. So I'm going to put it back on the lathe, reprofile it until I'm hey, happy. Here we go. Reprofile it. 
totally different but now it feels good it feels just the way i like it so let's let's cut it down and put okay it it's uh 5 30 a.m <laughs> but here's where we're at okay we have uh the handle is very much the way I'd, um very satisfied with the handle you see that now we're going to stain it obviously we're going to put a little gun stock on there but this is how it works you see this here this is threaded into there you see the threads in there it gets all the way threaded into here then this gets placed into this through here and it's it's almost a, a snug fit going through here and then because there's going to be a jb weld and everything in there and then this will meet up with that see that there and that's what will stop this from spinning back and forth and all this will be uh put together but first we got to stain this before we put everything together and uh, you know how you can tell when you've been in the shop a long time when you're finished and you come out and it's it's dawn okay it's uh day two it was a late one last night and everything is pretty much finished with the screwdriver but uh, a couple things i want to talk about real quick um i just came and saw uh 357 magdad did a fantastic video on a half and half wrench you have to see it it's out of this world what a great job he did on that wrench came out fantastic so uh, if you haven't seen that, go check that uh, out. Then we move over to Instagram, and uh, a good friend of the show, as you know, Ben, the tool addict, uh, he posted a, a picture on Instagram. I just want you to check out these tools. You know, we know Ben, is uh, he's been doing a lot of acquisitions lately, getting a lot of old and rare and interesting tools, but man, his restorations, I just love his restoration. Look at these restorations that he's done, the colors. I'll tell you that cobalt blue on those wrenches, even my girlfriend said, wow, that is really, that, that blue really kicks it up a notch. So congratulations, Ben. Yeah, uh, I love seeing your restorations. Can't wait to see you next one. Now, this is a mosh, and uh, there are a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, uh, I, I did acquire another screwdriver handle that I wanted to show you. I got this a while back, but uh, it goes with the, uh, you know, those type of bits that you can get, those interchangeable bits. But I think you might find it interesting. Let's go check now, it out. Now, since we are finishing up screwdriver week this week, I uh, I had picked this up. You see here, I, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but uh, it is a, a 214 piece uh, screwdriver bit and it has security bits. And now these are all over. Uh, the internet, but there are different uh, qualities, and this one seems to be a pretty decent quality. It uses the A2 alloy steel, and you can see how many bits are in there. It's quite a few bits. I think it has, if if you don't find the bit you need in this, I don't know what you're going to do, but you know how I like, uh, specifically, I like the uh, spade bits, and you can see here, we have two over here, and uh, this is like 15 just just spade bits in there. Uh, the quality is uh, is pretty decent. You can see here they are stamped like we we're saying with the uh, S2. This is a uh, a number six bit, and uh, and like I said, these are the S2, uh, which means it's a little bit like hard, like like high speed steel, but they don't have the toughness of. Uh, now it's harder than chrome vanadium, but it also means it's a little more brittle. So they're they're not really made for the impact drivers, even though they have the longer bits here, which are traditionally found for the impact drivers. But uh, I do like them for the simple reason that, and I'll show you. I'll give you an example. Uh, here is a um, a regular bit here. We'll see what the uh, lettering is. This is a uh, S22, I guess. Uh, but you can see this is a handle I bought. Uh, from Amazon also to Malco and uh, Malco makes some uh, good stuff here And this one's actually made in Taiwan and has this locking collar in here Just like you see on the impact drivers. So when you place this in It locks in there, you know, it's it can't come out. It can't pull out So this is a nice little handle now what I found so interesting is this set here this entire set and, and look at the There's a lot of bits in there, right? I mean, and it also has these two, um, these, you know, the locking adapter, and it also has the regular, the magnetic adapter. This whole set was $30, so, uh, which is nice, because I said there is nothing now that I could go, I, not that I really deal with a lot of security bits, but I'm covered. And this handle was $10, made in Taiwan. Uh, both on Amazon. Next up, I had to go to Tractor Supply the other day, and, and these were uh, uh, in a set of two for ten dollars. So that means they're five dollars a hammer. But I have to tell you, uh, I have a bunch of these. I leave these all over every floor. I use these all the time. 
You you cannot believe how great these dead blow hammers are. This one pound. I'm telling you, you got to get one of these if you don't have one. But especially at a cheap price like this, you can pick it up to see if you like it or not. But uh, they also had uh, one of these, and that's got the steel cap uh, with the dead blow feature. It's like a ball peen dead blow. These are real nice. But you know what I thought was pretty interesting about this? Again, like I said, this was a five dollar hammer, so you don't expect anything. But uh, the wood grain. <laughs> do you see the wood grain you know i know you might think uh, it fooled me at first and then i read i said oh yeah that's right it's red it's probably not wood but uh the wood grain throughout i thought that was pretty interesting i said you know whoever designed that in there either had a good sense of humor or uh I just thought that was pretty cool. So that's why I picked those up. Okay, back to the screwdriver. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this screwdriver looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. Uh, this here was a, a very interesting build for me because it had a lot of sentimental value between the uh, screwdriver that was Patty Sheridan's and the wood that's from Dave over at Ingalls Coach Shop. So this this is, uh, and it came out really nice. I was going to put a little Scout Crafter red on the top, but then I was looking at the, you know, let me tell you, uh, when you use ash, okay, uh, when you get into woodworking and things, everybody kind of always goes for the, the more exotic woods and things like that. But I always turn pine and, and junkyard woods and things like that and, you know, there's something to be said about, uh, you could see the grain because it's a thick grain. Ash has a very strong grain. It's gun stock on there. Again, we did that, uh, we polished out the, uh, the carriage bolt that goes through here, uh, the ferrule. Now, let me tell you what a ferrule is usually used for. A ferrule is used when the wood grain gets down to where it gets too thin. They made a tin cap to cover it because the grain gets too thin when the wood grain goes in there and it would cover it and it would strengthen the grain. Since our grain ended here, we put a ferrule on for looks. And what we did is I took a piece of arrow shaft uh, from a, you know, I save a bunch of old arrows and I, I uh, put the arrow shaft inside of the ferrule that came out and it, the arrow shaft actually goes in about, about a half an inch into here so that the, the ferrule can't move or anything. And we were able to keep the, all of the chrome vanadium lettering on there and that's why we had to make it this length so that you get to see everything on there reground the tip look at that huh not beautiful and uh it's just a nice screwdriver isn't it It has a nice you know good size to it uh you know again i still don't have enough uh, shellac on the only one coat but because you know we're pressed for time here so that's today's build and it looks almost like the uh uh the machinist screwdriver we did not too long ago, but I, I just really like that style and it's, uh, you know, sentimental. It's a lot so of fun. So there you have it, our second video for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a little kind of a mosh uh, to go along with the other one. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.